Hello, hello, this is Fuchsia from Bella Loon, and today I'm doing another acrylic pouring painting. This is a new technique for me. It's called an open cup. I've also seen it called a cookie cutter pour. This is an 8x10 stretch canvas. The base coat is a dark mix that I made with two parts Floetrol, one part paint, a splash of GAC 800, and enough water to get a pretty runny consistency. There's a little bit of silicone oil in there as well, although that's typically not ideal for a base coat. I was just being lazy and I happen to have those left over. The purple color was scraped from prior paintings and I already had the black mixed. I just blended them together by swiping with a palette knife. Then I set down the star cookie cutter where I wanted the design to begin and started pouring the paints into the center. So once the cup was full, I helped it move along by lifting it gently as I move it in the direction I want it to go. And the bottom of the cup swipes the paint and makes amazing cells. Then I add more paint. The paints are a mix of things this time. I've been experimenting with different pouring paints. That's why this piece turned out the way it did. The pink color is a similar mix to the black that I mentioned already. The blue is a metallic pre-mixed pouring paint by TMOL or TMOL. The green is also the TMOL brand of pouring paint. And the purple is a similar mix to the black and the pink. I wish it had stayed like this, but that's the consequence of mixing paints like I did and stretching. The problem with using a mix of paints is that they weren't all the same consistency, so my cells didn't hold their shape when I was stretching it out. And the reason for that is because they flow at different rates when they're different consistencies, and some overtake the others. So I started stretching it out and noticed the paints flowing inconsistently. So I decided that it needed more paint in the negative spaces, so I just kept layering colors. The T-Mole paints looked good in this piece, but their paints and other pieces have dried kind of shiny and sticky, which I don't like, but I think a top coat of resin might help those out. The pouring paints are about the same cost as my custom mix, which is nice. The other benefit is that you don't have to mix them, which is really time consuming and should be done outside and in a mask. The pre-mixed paints let you be creative whenever you want, even if time is limited. So when I had this X, I started stretching it out. Now you can probably see how the cells got stretched because the paints weren't flowing well together. The t pouring paints were thicker than my custom mix with Floetrol. I did just buy some Amsterdam paints and those come highly recommended by the pros. Apparently they make amazing cells with just water. Believe it or not, the water option is even more expensive than the Floetrol option because you have to use more paint with the water mix. The experts say you shouldn't mix more than 30% of water in your paints or they start to break up. If you're doing a custom mix, the Floetrol is definitely the cheapest mixing medium you can buy. You can get it at the larger hardware stores. I'm not sure that I love the Minwax, to be honest. I need to experiment more to say for sure. But the silicone oil is definitely the best thing for cells, I think. I decided to stretch a bit more because I wasn't liking those black areas on the left side. I definitely need to do this technique again with more consistently mixed paints. I was thinking it could be cool to do a shooting star where it crosses the canvas like the first diagonal line, and then I leave the negative space on the sides and I don't stretch it. Then maybe add the outline of the star back in after it dries or something, and maybe flick some paint onto the canvas with a toothbrush to make a starry night effect. If I should try that, let me know in the comments. You can see I'm editing the sides and edges now to make sure those are covered. I did a little bit of heat gun at this point to see if I could get some more cells to pop out and pop any bubbles. And here's the close-up with indirect lighting. It still came out cool, but it doesn't look like what I was going for. It actually dried really cool with the T-Mole metallics, though. It was really vivid. So please make sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And if you want to be notified of new videos, you can hit the little bell. I have more paintings to post soon. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!